That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Comic Reviews. Sorry it's so late, sorry we're in lower quality. Gonna get this done as quickly as possible. Uh, decent size, three books in a trade. Trade used very lightly there. Uh, so let's start with the last thing I read, which is Predator vs. Judge Dredd vs. Aliens, number two. Um... I like this issue more. The last issue, I was kind of just like, oh, okay, this is kind of crazy, and it seems like they're they're doing some nutso stuff, but we'll see how it goes. This issue, I like quite a bit. Um, it's still pretty crazy. They're still doing some pretty nutso stuff, but in a way that I quite like. Um, they're just doing the right kinds of things for this. You know, my problem with uh, Predator Life and Death is the Predators were kind of punks, uh, and this certainly had a predator being a punk, but now we've got predators showing up and shit's getting real, and I like that. Um, and then there's, you know, there's more stuff with these, you know, I'm just gonna call them splicers, because that's what they are. That's going on, that's cool, there's some history with Dread and this super villain guy, that's fine. Um... The thing that makes this issue really cool is the way that it's all set up. Is you know, we just get this situation set up for the next issue where it's Dread left alone in a room with a judge that's been genetically altered with alien DNA and a pred alien. And so I'm really excited to see how that goes. And then, um, I can never remember her name. Uh,. Hold on. Uh, it's it's bad not to remember characters' names. She was in the movie, I'm pretty sure. Eh, I can't remember her name. Anyway, the, the psychic judge, female judge, um, she's taken away by the villain to be the, the future queen of the aliens, I guess. Um... Oh, yeah, I, I just imagine this guy speaking with a German accent. Oh, yes, my dear, you are the next stage of the experimentation with this strange and wondrous hemomorphic species. And let me say, you're going to make a fine queen. Um, it just sounds right. You know, I like I, I like how just over the top this is right now, and that's, that's making this quite a bit of fun for me as I go through it. Um, yeah, I'm excited to keep reading this now. The first issue is just kind of iffy on. Uh, this I'm liking quite a bit more, so we'll see how it continues to go. Um, one thing I can say about the art. Nothing's wowing me. It's consistent. It's not bad. Um, nothing's amazing about it, though. Like, the, the full-page spreads, or the, the full-page pictures, rather, are really where you, you can tell the artist is having a bit of fun. And maybe it's just I don't care for the style or something. I don't know. I, there should be something just inherently enjoyable about Judge Dredd being attacked by a baboon man. But I'm just not getting into it for some reason. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm not in love with the Predator designs. One of them feels very 80s. Uh, we get kind of some close-ups on them. And these panels gives you an idea of what the Predator designs look like. Kind of iffy on them. I don't like this guy right here, because he's got kind of like the, the whole Cyclops thing. And that feels very 80s, so I'm ultimately okay with it, but I'm not happy about it, if that makes sense. Um... Xenomorph skulls still never make any goddamn sense because they have exoskeletons, so why do they have internal skulls? That's stupid. Yeah, that's all I got. Um, fun issue. I'm excited to keep going. Next, we have the final issue of The Legend of Wonder Woman. Except it's not because this book got renewed. Yes. Oh, that makes me happy. Um, and the reason why that makes me happy is not just because I'm a Wonder Woman fan, but I'm also a Green Lantern fan. 
And so you know how I was speculating about how the big bad guy revealed at the end of the last issue will kind of look like the Anti-Monitor? You know what he kind of looks like also? Kind of looks like a Manhunter. And apparently that's what he is. And at first, when they used the term Manhunter, I was like, okay, it's just something else that they're calling uh, a Titan. They're just It's just a word that they're using. It's an odd choice to do that in DC, but it's just a word choice. It's not going to be real Manhunters. But then the book goes on, and it's all like, there are thousands of them. They were created to help defend the universe, and now they've been discarded by the creators, and, and have gone mad. I'm like, um... And no man escapes the Manhunters. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's, that's Green Lantern Manhunters. So, Wonder Woman fought like a gigantic Manhunter, which is a really neat idea. I've never seen them on that scale before, as like, that's just their base form. Um been watching Dragon Ball Z if you couldn't tell uh so I was I was quite excited to to see that and since this book is getting picked up and getting more issues fingers crossed I'm really really hoping that we get a Green Lantern um cameo or something that'd be awesome because I love Green Lantern and since I know one of the creators of this book has been watching I'm going to take this moment <laughs> To say, here's my headcanon. The reason Steve Trevor's plane crashed was because Hal Jordan was his wingman. And that's the moment that the ring came and got him, causing his jet to cream off, knocking Steve out of the air. That's why he crashed on Themyscira. Hal Jordan was taken out to space. Huh? Huh? Think about it. Think about it. You, you have the opportunity now. It would sound like you thought of this. Just saying. Just saying. Since I have your ear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Uh, and you don't even have to credit me. I won't care. I'll just be excited to see that happen. Now, credit me. Credit me. I want at least $5 million. I, I assume that's a fair amount. Um, but yeah, the art is just absolutely fantastic. Again, I'm not 100% in love with some of the colors. They just they just look a little too orange from time to time for me, and that, that does bother me. Uh, Wonder Woman's not from Jersey. Um, but beyond that, I'm really fine with a lot of how, how this comes out. It's a tough thing to, to color Greek without just going... You know, Greeks are bronze, really. Uh, so it's it's hard it's a it's a fine line so it's a hard thing to learn how to get just right color wise she looks kind of orange and pink in in certain panels and that can certainly be an effect of the lighting and the situation and and he's drawing um clouds and stuff that are red and and that's when she's the most red so that certainly makes sense um from a lighting perspective but it's been too consist consistent throughout the books to the point to throughout the book to the point where it does bother me that Wonder Woman is a Cheeto. Um, and in some of the it's it's not a problem sometimes, and I think it's just going overboard on lighting affecting the character design. Because in that panel, she looks like a pretty good color. I like her there, um, and that's fine. Cool. Yep. That'll... I think that'll do it for this book, too. I'm really excited to see it continue. Looks like we're setting up some stuff with Cheetah. Uh, I'm not sure the way in which it's going to continue. If it's going to be, like, another nine issues, or if it's just going to become an ongoing. Either way, I'm happy. Um... Yeah, you know, we're setting up stuff with the the evil beast that unleashed the Manhunters. Which I'm going to assume is not going to be Krona. This is the only hint we get of them. <laughs> but the darkness was patient and could afford to wait. Revenge would certainly be wrought, and not only planet Earth would receive it. Um... 
so it certainly looks like we're, we're going to look out to space for some more of this stuff. And there's some stuff on Mars that'll be interesting, too. Um, the war is over now. We, we do a major time jump at the end. World War II is over, and we have, um, we have Wonder Woman apparently on the JSA and kind of living in isolation on an island. Uh, and Etta Candy comes to visit her, and she's like, oh, we'll, we'll have a good time. We'll, we'll, I'll help you. I'm going to talk you into moving to the city and, and rejoining humanity. Um, so, looks like we're going to have a major time jump, which is fine. I'm, I'm excited to pick up the next volume of this or whatever. Um, this is something I really would consider buying the trade for even though I already have all the single issues because I, I imagine it'll read fantastically just all as one. Uh, DC animated movie? Just saying, it's it'd be a good fit. It's a sh nice story. You, you can trim a little things here and there and it's not going to be a huge drawback from it. Uh, you you have enough material that you don't have to add stuff. I think this would be a great candidate for a DC animated movie. Of course, they won't do that, but be a good candidate. And then the final single issue of the week is the DC Comics Bombshells first annual. Yay! Sorry, Batgirl, I'm touching your boobs. Booby, booby, booby. Oops. Um, we're getting Batgirl introduced, finally. And this is the thing with this book. Um, I really, really love Bombshells. There are a fuck ton of characters. There are so many goddamn characters in Bombshells. Now we just introduced four more. Really. That's a lot of people. Um, but no, I, I quite like it. So Barbara Gordon is a vampire. Uh, Killer Croc was cursed by Enchantress, and Slade Wilson's daughter is a, um, prophet. A prophety pirate. Jim Gordon looks just like the animated series. It's only in a couple panels, but he looks just like the animated series. Um... This book has a song in it. Songs don't work in comic books, but the art's nice to look at. You can get the exact same story from it, so that's fine. I like that page. That's a cool page. I think I like the cover more, but that's a cool page, too. Hmm. Yeah, I really prefer the cover. Anyway, uh, Lucius Fox is introduced and then pretty much just dropped um now nah, he's gonna be a, a recurring element in her story but yeah i want to get to the the pirate okay this is what i'm talking about with really clever character designs i don't give a fuck about this character whatsoever never have just do not give two shits about deathstroke's daughter but that's one hell of a way to do a character design you have a character who's missing an eye or supposed to be Fucking pirate. That's perfect. Uh, not crazy about Enchantress. It's, it's just a little typical for, like, witch. Okay, let's give it the pointy hat, but that's okay. Um, making Batgirl a vampire is not explained in this issue. It's just that she is. She was apparently looking for immortality and... Or a way to, to bring the dead back, more specifically. Um and somehow stumbled into vampirism from that. Um, no, another character introduced here. Five characters introduced. Got an Amanda Waller. I'm not sure who this girl's supposed to be. Huh. Francine Charles. Who is that character? I really don't know that. It, am I missing something? She's black. She's apparently got polio. 
here's a weird detail that I don't like, though. Um, so they mentioned that she had polio, this, this character that we've just introduced. And she says, if it's good enough for the president, it's good enough for me. And then Amanda Waller says, I'll let her know you feel that way. Eleanor is more dangerous on two wheels than half the German army crawling along the spike treads on, on their panzers. I really don't like that idea that, that we're living in an alternate universe where um, there's a woman president in World War II. A lot of this book has been dealing with um, oppressed groups and, you know, feminism and uh, female empowerment and a lot of great themes like that. And I feel like just offhandedly making the president a woman is a weird idea because like it, it changes the narrative if this is the norm. Part of the, the attraction of this, like it's, it can't be the norm because in the first issue, being a Batwoman was illegal. I don't like it. I really don't. I mean, I, it seems cute, but the more I think about it, the less I like it. It is legitimately bothering me. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that. It's an offhanded joke, so it really doesn't matter. But just, no, I don't like that. Oh, there's a Katana reference. Cool. What else happens in this? Um, now, nah, pretty much she just convinces the Enchantress ravenger and uh bat girl to join the uh bombshells oh and killer croc to join the bombshells as the suicide squad um so we'll see how that goes i i don't know once again i love this book i've loved bombshells a ton just so many goddamn characters <laughs> So we'll see how it goes as it continues on and on and on and on. Okay, and my final thing to talk about this week is just Zorro. Zorro. Like, Zorro in Old California. There we go. Um, this is something that's... It's more for kids, but not like in a Dora the Explorer kids book kind of way. There's... It just, it's, it's more all ages kind of book. Um, and it feels just like episodes of the television show, just shorter. Um, that's all that's going on here is like, and everything is meant to very much look like the Guy Williams television show. I'll see if we can find a good panel of, um, and yeah, there's like Garcia. Uh, he looks a lot like he did in the show. Um, let's see if I can find a good panel of Diego or Zorro. I, I know there's something to that. Oh wait, here's Zorro. Looks just like Guy Williams. Um, you know, I didn't pay attention to that. Oh, there's a closer up. Zorro looks just like Guy Williams. Um, so yeah, it's, it's meant to very much be the Disney show. That being said, I liked some of it. I had one major problem with one of the stories. And it's not exclusive to this book. Though kind of. Um, Alright, so how do I go about this? There's a video, I'll put a link in the description. You can see me dressed up like Zorro, so it should make your day. Um, there's a video I did about a year ago just talking about some thoughts I had on the Disney Zorro show. And I should face the microphone so you can actually hear me. I Just talking about some thoughts that I had, some feelings and thoughts that I had on the Disney Zorro show, which I do love. But the problem with that show is every major villain was a corrupt politician or military man or whatever. And Zoro would always just beat them 
in the name of true justice or the king's law. But if every villain is with the government and Zoro is supposed to be a champion of the people, then guess what? Zoro needs to realize the government's fucked. And it's not like he was fighting the American government. I mean, come on, the motherfucker was fighting Spanish California, one of the most tyrannical, uh, you know, rules in history. There's a reason there was a Mexican Revolution. Um, so the show never really dealt with it. Uh, there is, you know, one, like, character whose arc over a couple episodes, like, he was trying to start a rebellion and Zorro didn't want him to do that. And that was certainly problematic, but it was more just about the guy being angry and, and um, you know, the, the laws being mistreated. It just needed to be, the laws needed to be uh, distributed justly and, and everybody would be fine. So it's, it's a little weak. Um, it's certainly problematic, but it's not, it's not out and out bad. But then this story, and, and that was about the closest that um, the Disney Zorro show ever got to doing anything with the Mexican Revolution. But if you don't know about it, anything about the Mexican, Revo Mexican Revolution, there's a reason and you should look into it. Spanish Revolution, too. Um, so in this episode, or in this one story, we get like four stories in here, which I did quite like. Um, in this one story, Zorro is captured by some Mexican rebels. And they have this exchange. What do you want from me, Senor Zampa? Well, you see, my goal is to free California of the yoke of the Spanish king and to establish the republic. Don't you think that will take planning and time? No, senor, the time is now. I need only you. Your promise is immense. Your prestige is immense. You could help our cause. You're right. I am against injustice, but I prefer to defend the people in my own way. I am sorry, but count me out of your scheme. How unfortunate. And then he locks Zorro up. And the guy's plan is to kill the governor. You can say a lot of things about Zorro. You can't say that he's peaceful uh, in in his fight for justice. He's, you know, depending on your version, to some extent, the Guy Williams version. He had no desire to go out and kill people, but it, people did die fighting Zorro in that show. Um, you have, like, Zorro's one of the more brutally real superheroes uh you know you you watch the mask of zorro he cuts a dude's neck um right from the very beginning leaving his mark was not cutting clothing he would fucking zorro is the original i'll catch you kind of guy um <laughs> that's where that stereotype comes from um zorro was was that guy uh so there, there was a certain sense of, um, of a grittiness to Zorro. And that's not entirely in the, the Guy Williams Disney show. That is a much lighter series. He never cuts someone's skin, only leaves his mark in clothing. Um, it's a much more lighthearted series, certainly. But they had the sense not to do anything like this. Because when you put Zorro in the place of... And, like, he, he protected governors and governmental officials before, but that's because he knew they were innocent or, or that, you know, the person trying to kill them wasn't doing it for the right reasons but was doing it because they were, wanted personal profit or something out of it. Guy William Zorro certainly did that. But again, the show had the reason, had, had the sense not to have Zorro approached by Mexican rebels and ask him to join the fight and then have him tell them no and stop them from starting off the revolution. 
that's a problem. Um, you know, revolutions are ugly, uh, certainly. So you either don't have Zoro involved, which I think is problematic to do, especially if you're having him fight people who are the oppressors in their the oppressors because they're in governmental roles. Um, so you either don't have Zoro fight, which is a bad option. You have Zoro refuse to fight, but to be morally supportive. He's, he's there to protect justice, and in his mind, justice is not... Um, Picking a side, justice is being the most just. And you could have made that work here. But this isn't a long enough story to where it does. So that that's obviously my preference. Or the third one is you turn Zoro into a full-on revolutionary, which could work too. It's just you need to make sure that he takes a good stance against it. Uh, or a good stance and is a, a very critical rebel um you, you could do that with Zoro. you could have him be supportive of, of the revolution but also like really stand by and you know keep them honest as it were so that they they do the right things you can't have him be by any means necessary kind of rebel um and that that would bother a lot of people so i prefer the idea that he doesn't um he doesn't support the crown doesn't necessarily support the revolution beyond any just yes we need justice um i i am perfectly fine with zoro just fighting for justice but he has to have a very clear definition of what that is and so this one story is the most i have to say about this whole book because a lot of it is just you know fairly light-hearted stuff um you know there's a the magistrate hatches a plan uh, Zoro foils it some way or another and makes him look like a fool and cracks a joke. Uh, the perfect, like, you know, they're fighting on rooftops. Magistrate falls in the water. Uh, Zoro goes, the perfect spot for your morning bath. <laughs> Help, Sergeant, I can't swim. You know, stuff like that. Um, there's some sweet moments, too. Uh... Like, Zoro's seeing these these two off um, as they go to, like, sail away to, to escape the magistrate. And um, she goes, just a minute, just a minute. Do you know that I have guessed who's hiding behind the mask? Let me whisper it in your ear. And so he leans in close and she kisses him and on the cheek and runs away. Um, never to see him again. And he does the whole Zoro on the back of Tornado thing. Um, so that was cool, and then there's, you know, some other just fun stuff, um, Zoro dealing with being framed, Zoro dealing with this, uh, you know, it's just cool stuff, I enjoyed it, uh, to one extent or another. What was this last story about? I forget. Oh, Zoro had to break his father out of jail, and um defeat the magistrate and blah 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 uh hmm yeah like it's it's just fun if you really like the disney show you would like this uh and it's worth picking up because it's not like really really super childish or anything it's more just a fun action book um more than anything else it's not really saying much of anything um it's no Amnesty for Zorro, which if you're going to watch any episode of the Disney Zorro show, watch Amnesty for Zorro. Uh, it's no Amnesty for Zorro, but it's certainly got some, uh, you know, fun, sweet, cool moments. Uh, it's really just reminiscent of, of what made the Guy Williams show really fun, which is all it's trying to be. Again, I just have problems with, with Zorro and Revolution in the same story you gotta really know what you're doing and it's pretty clear the writer didn't think it through um there are major implications of that and the writer just clearly wasn't thinking about it um eclipse books i don't think there's a writer credit in here anyway um oh by nudad and marcelo um so yeah first names only uh yeah I don't know. I quite enjoyed it. It's fun. It's certainly a fun book. I'm glad I got it. I think I got this for like four or five bucks anyway. So, um, 
anything Zorro in comics, I'll I'll pick up more or less. Uh, I don't want to say that too hard because there might be some really really bad Zorro comics. I'm sure. But yeah, always fun to to get some Zorro, and I I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got for this week's episode of Comic Reviews. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I am Sid Part 2, and I'll be reviewing things.